Have you seen these alien toys over at Walmart? They're absolutely vicious. Leonard toys, crazy stuff. Hey everyone, it's Dan at Squirrel Stampede, and today we've got three seven inch fully articulated monstrous aliens to look at, and the grand mom queen of them all. Oh my, she's ginormous, a monster to behold. So if you're looking for something really terrifying, these are the toys for you today. Let's start opening them up and learn a little bit about the xenomorph. Squirrel Stampede! Please squirt! Squirment! And a squirrel eye. Let's start off with the Xenomorph Warrior Alien from Lanark Toys. How have we not shown off these yet on the channel? I don't know. Because they're scary! Yeah, I guess they are kind of scary. Alien definitely more for the mature audience. However, the toys can be fun for all. Oh, are you kidding me? Oh. So this probably I would say is the second year of Leonard Alien Toys. I missed many of the items from the first year, but when I was out looking for Godzilla and I saw these, I thought, oh, I just gotta see these opened. This one, a 7-inch collectible, fully posable alien, and the packaging's pretty top-notch. The packaging is scary. And the best, craziest part of these Leonard Toys is they're incredibly cheap. This toy running only $10. You get a warrior alien, you get a creature canister. Do we get a dog tag though? And a good bio on the back. Prepare yourself, the universe trembles. Calling all colonial marines. Get ready to gear up and take on the most fearsome creatures to inhibit planet LV-426 and beyond in an epic space battle. The dreaded xenomorphs have multiplied in vast numbers threatening the lives that inhabit space colonies reaching to the far ends of the universe. Gather your crew to take on, fight, and or eradicate the ever-growing numbers of these terrifying aliens. And also learn this very cool accent. Queen is scary. That she is, big gray squirrel. So I believe if we're careful, we may open up this box and preserve it. It displays so well in the box. I mean, it's got this great little background. The alien warrior is doing something interesting. It's got his briefcase ready to go to work. So let's try to open up and see this blue xenomorph warrior out in action. And out of the box, the blue Xenomorph Warrior. How very intense and interesting. It's got its alien briefcase here ready to go to work. Don't you dare create an alien squirrel Xenomorph out of me. How is this only $10? I repeat, how is this only $10? It's pretty impressive. And it's scary. The sculpt work is really spot on. I mean, this is better than what Kenner created in the 90s and even better than many of the special edition alien toys out there that have came about over the years. Here comes Lantern Toys, a cheap bulk toy supplier for Walmart, and there you go, I guess. The toy has great color, a shiny metallic blue with some highlights of green about too on the head and arms. And every angle says alien. Let's count the back rib spines. One, two, three, four, and a tentacle, plus a tail. I wonder what they use those for. Maybe to dry wet laundry. So for articulation, how will this go? I imagine we're gonna have head rotation, and it might get a little locked up by these huge shoulder pads. I believe xenomorphs play a lot of football in their downtime. We have opening and closing jaw, but I don't see a little mini mouth in there. Well, it's kind of back there, but don't see it protruding. Then we've got shoulders that are on hinges and pins and rotate. We've got elbows that do something. Okay, there we go. It's a little tight at first. Three fingered hands that rotate on wrists. And I don't believe they're hinged. They just rotate. I don't see... Oh, there is a waist. We can waist rotation too. Very impressive. There's hips to kick. Aliens love to do their high kicks. 
Oh, don't kick your own canister. And then we've got some knees and some ankles. So there is a ton of articulation in here. I imagine to do all sorts of crazy alien positioning, maybe not as much as you would think with all these articulated points, but still quite amazing considering for many years, the alien joints were locked up. Locked up scary, I tell ya. Oh. And knocking over the creature canister here, such a nice little addition to this toy. Open up the top and we can pull out this nice benevolent face hugger. Ugh, I hate it when that happens. I told you they were scary. Feels like a Mary Poppins kind of weekend. Yeah, Aliens is not for the faint of heart. Let's just keep that contained. So pretty impressive with the blue Xenomorph Warrior. Again, great packaging. We even could use this back cardboard diorama displayer to display this guy. Very interesting alien. Oh, oh my. I think the deluxe Alien Queen is beckoning us. Well, before the Alien Queen beckons us under her control, let's check out another one. We've got the Xenomorph Runner with Rottweiler. Are you kidding me? First I have to deal with this scary alien, and now I have to deal with a dog? How did I draw the short straw for this video? Ugh. So it's the Xenomorph Runner alien, featured Alien 3, I believe. This toy, of course, with an alien xenomorph runner and a Rottweiler toy, plus another face hugger. The bio on the back is the same. <laughs> yeah, we heard that tiny chipmunk squirrel. So we have the runner Xeno, I like that. Spike the dog and a face hugger. I really wish the dog tag was included. I didn't see a dog tag in the last pack. That would have made the set. So let's see how fast the Xenomorph Runner can run. And let's see how fast the big gray squirrel can run away. <laughs> Again, if you take care of your packaging, just a simple cut up top. And on the back side corner here. And you should be able to get your alien out without any destruction of your box. And the runner Xeno out of package. Which one is it? Oh, I think it's the one on the left. No, right. This one a little more slender, a little more dog-like than the Xenomorph Warrior. You can see the main differences on the back torso though. Very little projections coming from the back there. Oh, and there's kind of like a striped marking going down the head. That's creepy. And then very animal-esque dog-like features for the legs. In this case, it's pretty cool we don't just have a simple repaint. They had to place the Xeno Runner down on all fours and that changes the articulation a little bit. We still have head rotation and there is shoulders and they probably pin out and elbows that rotate and hinge and three-fingered, oh, four-fingered hands this time. The dog has more fingers than the human. And then we can stand, oh, the knees do not bend. Look at all the joint work going on in here. I don't even know where to begin. There is no joints on the legs other than the hips. And of course we can rotate the tail. As for spike here, this is a solid piece of spike plastic. Excuse me for a second, excuse me. My friend Champ here believes he is the real parent of the Xeno Runner because of his golden appearance and this golden-like alien. I believe Spike is not the real father. <laughs> On second thought and after intense deliberations, I believe Spike is the real father of the Xeno Runner. <laughs> okay. So if you're looking for a very interesting dog-like Xenomorph runner toy, look no further than this one. Plus you get Spike and another face hugger. This one kind of stands on his- Oh! Not again! I hate these guys. I really hate them. The correct wording is scary. They're scary! Oh no, the deluxe alien queen still calls for us. But we have one more of three Xenomorph to look at. 
This would be the Xenomorph Drone. The Xenomorph Drone, all in white. I'm trying to figure out what movie this one would be pulled from. Typically, aliens are seen in the most glossy of black, so a white Xenomorph is really odd looking, but actually quite fantastic. Almost looks like it would glow. The Xenomorph Drone included, of course, the drone, and now we've got a face hugger specimen in egg. Oh, that's just terrific. I think I just lost my lunch. And another look at Get to Know Your Xenomorph. Okay, Tiny Chipmunk Squirrel, we're good. We're really good there. This one does look like a repaint of the Xenomorph Warrior though, doesn't it? However, there may be some detailing that are different, actually. The head looks different, the arms. So I think enough is going to be enough to make this its own figure. Let's open up. Hello my baby, hello my honey, hello my ragtime summertime gal. Ah, that's who this alien reminds me of, the finale from Spaceballs. So the Xenomorph drone here, I guess not so much of a fighter as the warrior, but more of one of many of thousands. I like the look of this one, it's pretty creepy. And the scary. So these three are pretty fun to collect and display together, all three of them a little bit different. The alien drone has four fingers. Why does the warrior only have three? That seems like a really bad disadvantage to be a warrior with only three fingers. Although it does have these weird arm slicer blades. They must help slice deli meats. The xenomorph drone stands pretty much like the xenomorph warrior. Same articulation probably going on with head rotation, opening and closing jaw. I don't remember if we checked the jaw on this one. I think it shut open and then Rotation on the neck, shoulders, elbows, and body rotation, and hips and knees. Oh, and tail back there too. Oh, the jaw does close. This one almost looks to be glowing, but I don't think it does glow. And it also has those awesome back spines, tentacle things coming from its back. I wonder if aliens have a special dentist to work on those. It seems like something that they would need to maintain. Did you get your back spines cut down yet? No, I'm gonna let them grow in for another year. So a nice looking drone toy. I think out of the three, the warrior is still my favorite because of the blue. It's the most alien-esque of the color schemes. And I think I even had a very similar blue warrior alien when I was young. But the drone is nice and so is the runner. They're all pretty fantastic. Are you kidding me, fantastic? They're scary. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh, and it appears that Big Gray Squirrel has found the egg that comes with the drone, and you can place one of these face huggers inside to haunt your dreams. Oh no! The deluxe alien queen continues to beckon us. We can't hold out any longer. It's the enormous lights and sounds deluxe alien queen. Now that is truly terrifying, and I now go back to my Mary Poppins watching. So yeah, I went out looking for a deluxe electronic Godzilla and came back with a deluxe alien queen. Giant, poseable action creature. I like the play on action creature there. I believe this actually might be the second deluxe alien queen toy out there. The original was in more of a purple kind of want to go back and find that one. I think the purple one looked really nice too. It's a huge toy and again, killer price point, only $20 for this. How is this only $20? Because she's scary. <laughs> that she is big gray squirrel, pretty scary. Some interesting features though, internal jaw hissing attack feature with sounds. And some lighting effects too. Plus quite posable with all those extra arms. Great packaging again over onto the back. We've got the same bio. Here's the light and sound alien queen imaged. 
20 points of articulation. That's pretty impressive for a large scale figure like this. Sometimes the larger they are, the more plastic they are. 12 inches tall chomping jaw attack. There is that classic disgusting alien mouth mini of inside their jaw. Well, we must prepare to run away and remove this giant deluxe alien queen from package. So let's get her out. And there we go, the deluxe alien queen. How truly scary. I'll give you this one, big gray squirrel. Absolutely scary. You know, I don't know why, but she's kind of cute. You know, I think we just broke big gray squirrel. But look at this monstrous monster toy. Oh my, this tail is quite the distance. She's standing pretty well. I can't believe she's not really falling over yet. So a good footprint and a good tail balance to all that upper torso weightedness. Ooh, more back spines. She's got the six back reverse ribs going on. They're huge. It's gotta be painful to sit down in any sort of recliner. And then the queen alien has four sets of arms. We've got the main alien arms here, and then just because they thought, hey, let's kind of T-Rex her a little bit and give her some tiny forearms. All these arms have great articulation too. They can reach out while they rotate, and they can reach in and out. And she has elbows to move and wrists to move. Do we have wrists? No, they're not. These are great hands that hold on to my thumb. Let go, let go of my thumb. Ah. These hands have great action figure grabbing like features, so pretty nice on the grabness of the hands. And then the little tiny forearms, they even have a little bit of rotation and hinging too. So that's kind of neat. Hips that move and rotate, so we can kind of have her move down and capture a figure and throw them across the room, which would be scary in itself. And a little bit of articulation on those feet too. So plenty of movement for a large scale toy you usually don't see. And for the lights and sound hissing jaw attack feature, open up jaw here if you will, and just simply press down on this giant head crested back thingy she has going. Oh, that's terrifying. Absolutely impressive. I believe maybe if we close this jaw, will she punch through herself? No, you're gonna want to manually open those jaws to get that little tiny mouth to come out. Plus that little red flickering of light adds to the horror of this toy. So there they are, the Leonard Toy Alien Collection. What? What? Uh oh. Oh no. Oh, Mecha Godzilla is here. Wow, I'm shocked. Mecha Godzilla is a little bit shorter than the giant alien queen. Oh no, but now we have to look out for Squirrelzilla too. These three, some of the most fearsome monsters ever to walk across the table. These three do not like each other. Oh, and they're attacking fiercely. The queen throws Squirrelzilla into Mega Godzilla. Oh, but Squirrelzilla turns his back and has the queen, while Mega Godzilla comes in for the tail whip attack. Debris flying everywhere. Oh no, but the tail whip attack fails, and the queen gets the upper tail and tosses Squirrel Mechazilla. Squirrelzilla and Mecha Godzilla won't give up though, and they go in for the double body slam. Is it over for the queen? Uh, I'm not sure. Oh, she throws them off. Can anybody stop the queen? Mr. Mime? He's miming slapping his face, and the queen mimes slapping her face, and she goes down. And Squirrelzilla and Mechagodzilla celebrate, and they hoist Mr. Mime into the air. I have seen many stupid things, but this one takes the cake. 
And that is the Alien Collection today. What a spooky, scary series these are. If you like today's video, please give us a squike, a squirrel live, and a squamit. Let us know your most scariest moment of the Alien franchise that we probably shouldn't be watching. Thanks for watching, that's what I have to say about that.